Uh, welcome. This is going to be a basic tutorial on how to do digital coloring of drawings on Pixlr Editor. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go on to Pixlr Editor, uh, which is an online web-based like Photoshop program. And we'll click on um, Open Image. And what we're going to do is we're going to upload uh, a photograph or a scanned image of a drawing you did uh, that has line work already built into it. So it could be a hard penciled line drawing or like an ink drawing. Basically, uh, we're going to work with something black and white. So search for your image. It's taking me a little while here. There it is. This is just an image I found online. And it'll pop up on the screen like this. So this is your work hub. Um, this right here is your toolbar. If you float your uh, tool over it, uh, it'll tell you exactly what that tool is. Uh, we'll be using um, a couple tools today, uh, such as the brush tool, and we'll be using the dodge and burn tool as well, and we'll cover that in a second. Uh, over here is your layers palette, so this is your first layer, and uh, that's the navigator, so you can zoom in and zoom out as you please. And that's the layer palette, uh, it's called background right now, this picture. If I click here on the left, I can rename it, so I'm going to call that line art. And just click off of it or click the X there. And if I want to use it, I have to click double click that little lock off. And the checkbox means the image is available to see. Check it off and it disappears. Okay, once you have that set up, if your line work needs to feel like it's like it has a little more contrast, go to adjustments and hit the levels option. Up here you have a few slide bars and you can tweak up the intensity of your outline, if you go a little too crazy, uh, the darks get a little bit wild. So kind of find that sweet spot where you feel like it's uh, as effective as you want it to be. So if you had a drawing that was a little bit on the lighter side, you can enhance it so the lines are bolder and vice versa. I want you to do that, hit apply. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click and we're going to duplicate, um, we're going to change this blend mode to multiply of this layer. That's going to allow us to color behind uh, the line work. And if I hit this plus sign, or hold on one second, and we want to make sure I'm going to create a duplicate layer right there so we have a copy. And the reason is uh, we, we're going to work on the line art copy and we're going to check off the box for the original line art. Say we make a mistake and we have to go back to the original, we have it there. So we'll, we can call this the color the one we're going to color. Okay, again, if I check that on and off, you'll see like a double line happen. If I select this color palette here and I click on that, a swatch opens up. I can literally pick any color I want and then just click OK when you're happy with the color. Right there. And here's my brush tool, which I have selected already. If I click there, I can control the size of the brush how soft I want it or hard I want it, and then there's some presets underneath of different types of brush styles. Click off of that. I'm going to create a swatch on the left of my background here. So if I want 100% opacity, I bring that all the way up. So on one click of the button, it's as green as the one I found. Or if I do 50%, it's a lighter version of the green. There's some colors I already mixed before, so it'll save some of your past colors. This is going to be a skin tone. So again, I'm going to create some pre-made uh, colors here uh, so they're easy to grab as I'm painting. I think I'm going to use green for the eyes. That second color I picked, I'm going to do for the skin. Maybe pick a little bit of blue. So you can uh, preset a bunch of colors off the bat if you know what colors you want to use. If not, if you're not sure, you can do it on the fly. But it's nice to have this because then you can go back and find those colors anytime. I'm just going to pick a color for the hair, which is going to be like a brown, and put that there. Okay. This swatch will be able to disappear and go away later, so it's good to have now. I'm going to hit my brush tool right there. Uh, I'm going to make my opacity 50%. I'm going to teach you about something right here, uh, see what you would rather do. But we're going to zoom in. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to start coloring right there. So that's a click of at 55 percent of that color. I'm going to bring my brush size down a little bit, maybe pick a harder brush. 
And if I move up, it kind of just softens that harder brush. So again, I'm bringing about 50% 50 of this color as I bring it in. Once I layer over, you're going to see some like ghost marks because if I'm only bringing 50% of the color at a time, it's going to bring 50% more and it'll look kind of blotchy. So I have a tip for you. Bring it to 100%. Your, um, open, instead of, yeah, bring it to 100%. You can see, but wait a minute. I'm covering my lines. There's a mistake I made, and I want to make sure if this happens to you, how to fix that mistake. My color needs to go underneath my lines. Okay? So how can I fix that? Well, we're going to create a new layer. So I'm just going to go edit, undo, till I'm back to before I colored. Because there's a step in here, and I wanted to make sure you saw this, so if you made this mistake, you'll know how to fix it. I can't color on that layer of the line drawing. I have to create a new layer that's empty. So if I go to the plus sign and hit empty, I get this empty layer and I'm going to sandwich it and put it underneath my color layer. Now when I color, it's literally underneath my line art. So now I can color and my lines stand out. I think the best idea is to pick a color you want to use and go at 100% opacity. That way when you fill, it's going to fill smooth and clean, depending on how, how your brush is, uh, um, how, how, you're, how nice you're working with your brush. So my process now is I'm going to just continue to fill. It's okay if you go a little bit past the edges of your drawing. You can clean that up later. Towards the end of your drawing, you can clean that up. Probably put it, going to put it against the background, stuff like that. Change your sizes at will. Just speeding up the process here. Constantly change the brush size. You can always change your opacity if you want. But I'm just working the information in here. I'm going to get a little bit of brown on my eyebrows. I'm going to talk about color mixing in a second. Now I'm going to use um, a tool. You can go back and see what I did there, but it's called the uh, eyedropper tool. I can select that color that I swatched and then go back to my brush tool, and there you go. I like to outline sometimes around areas and then take a bigger brush and fill. It just is, takes less time. I'm actually mixing the brown and the tan of the skin tone. So there, I did a fill. So if we look back, he's got a basic fill. Again, eyedropper tool, I'm going to pick some green, and I'm going to fill his eyes in with some green. And I want to give his lips a little color, so I'm going to pick a pink. Right there. I'm going to bring in a little bit of pink for some skin. If a color is ever too bold, what I can also do is pick another color and mix it into it to soften areas. Now let's talk about shading and highlight. So after you bring the base colors down, whenever you want to start darkening or lightening areas, um, what I'm going to do, because I think I'm ready for it, I'm going to select a tool right here, and it's called Dodge and Burn. If I want to darken an area, I click Darken, and I select a different brush size, whatever I want, to affect the area. And on the right, you'll see strength. It says 30 right now. That's how strong the darks come in. But every like, swipe I do, it's bringing in a darker version of that skin tone I brought in. So it automatically creates like a dark brush for that skin tone I already have. So if I go into a green area, it'll give me a darker green. So I'm sculpting around this face now, thinking about where shadows are. So you have to think about where you want shadows to be. I'm even darkening... like. I mean darkening like the, the eyebrows if I want. So whatever color I go over, it's going to darken it. Now if I switch over to the highlight option, I can actually start to bring lighter tones in. So now it's actually going to take the skin tone and bring a lighter, brighter version. So I'm not adding white, I'm adding a lighter tan color in. And that's going to create contrast and more dimension in it. You'll get better at this. Now let's take a look at the hair. I can do the same thing in the hair. I can kind of softly come in there, bring in some highlighted tones that separates, and then I can switch to the, the shading and bring some darker tones and create a lot of volume in the hair. So you can do this throughout your whole drawing. 
to enhance details, enhance color, and soften areas as well. Good luck.